So we start at 7.4. This is applications of trig derivatives. 7.4 is split into two parts. The first part would be just using the trigonometric um, uh, you know, applications of the derivatives of those. The second part is using related rates, which, again, we have to talk about related rates a little bit more before we finish 7.4. So this is just an introduction to using the trig in application, real life application questions, okay? So example two, and I'm gonna do two methods here. I'm gonna do a non-trig method of solving this, and I'm gonna do the trig method, okay? So you're gonna be able to see the differences here. So I'll draw the diagram here, and you should do this too. You should write out the question and draw the diagram. So what we have is we have a triangle, a right triangle, with the hypotenuse is 20, and we have one leg is x here, and the question says, find the maximum perimeter of a right triangle with hypotenuse 20 centimeters. So that's all we're given here, um, hypotenuse 20 centimeters. So it would be a good idea to label one side x, and actually we're going to label the other side y here for now. Okay, so two variables. Now the non-trig, okay, we're going to do first. And what we're looking to maximize is the perimeter. So the perimeter is going to be 20 plus x plus y. Does that make sense? But we don't want to, f you, to do an optimization uh, question if, if it's possible with two variables. Instead, we want to try and do them with just one if possible. And of course it's possible here because x and y are related. Now, how are x and y related without using trigonometry, that is sine, cos, and tan? How are x, y related here? Yeah, Pythagorean theorem, right? It's a right triangle. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 20 squared. Okay. So y squared is 400 minus x squared. y can be isolated to the square root of 400 minus x squared. Again, please do not say, hey, the square root of this is, is 20 minus x. It's, it's actually not. Uh, it's root 400 minus x squared, okay? Because 20 minus x, when you multiply that by itself, does not give you this, okay? So this is y. So we can write now the perimeter in terms of x. So we have 20 plus x plus the square root of 400 minus x. That's how we can express squared. That's how we can express y. <coughs> is everyone okay with that so far? We haven't used sine, cos, or tan at all for this. And this is how you would do this question in chapter 4, right, like we've done. And so, in order to find the um, critical number here, or numbers, we're going to want to try and uh, take the derivative of this. So that's no problem, the derivative of 20 is 0, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of this is going to be 1 half 400 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times negative 2x when you do the power rule and the chain rule. Agreed? So simplified, this is going to be then, um, it's going to be uh, negative x over the square root of 400 minus x squared, looks like. plus 1. Okay? <clears throat> and so if we want to let that find the critical number, we let that equal 0. So this is going to be equal to 0. So let's take this as a negative term. Let's take it to the other side. We've got x over root 400 minus x squared equals 1. And we'll multiply both sides by the root 400 minus x squared. Okay? And so what do we get here? Um, so we square both sides. Let's square both sides. We got x squared then equals 400 minus x squared. 2x squared equals 400. x squared equals 200. And x is going to equal root 200 or um, 10 root 2. Okay. And we'll leave this in, in um, radical form so it's more exact, okay? No, no decimals. Leave it in radical form. All right, so if x is 10 root 2, 
Um, what we could do is find the second derivative to see if this is a max or a min. But uh, if there's only one uh, critical number, which is there one? Actually, there's two, I guess. If we take the square root of 200, this is plus or minus. Does it make sense, though, to have a minus or a negative here? A negative length? If we're talking about length, we can reject the negative. So it's just the positive version. Okay, so that really means there's only one um, value. And if you think about the nature of the question, the maximum perimeter, could we have a minimum perimeter? Well, we could have a minimum perimeter, or, or could we? Like, um, what if this triangle, and again, you don't have to think through this, but what if the one side was really, really small and we basically had you know, something like this, this would be pretty much 20 and 20, right? Um, so would that be greater than if we had, you know, a 20 up here and then these two, right? Which would be, well, these would be, have to be more than half. Each of them would have to be more than half, right? So this would seem like smaller than something like this. So I'm just trying to think, think logically through that there would be a maximum and not a minimum. And plus the question asks for maximum. So your critical number, your find is going to yield you a maximum. Right? So later, if you want to test to see if this is a maximum or not, you can kind of either think through that or run some test points. But let's find out what y is here. It corresponds with the, the x. And so we have, um, okay. So right here, if x is 10 root 2, let's find out what y is. So the square root, 400, minus 10 root 2 squared, which that's root 200 squared, which would be 200. So y is going to be equal to root 200 as well, or 10 root 2. So x and y are going to be the same, the same length. Okay. All right. So the perimeter then would be the perimeter would be 20 plus 10 root 2 plus 10 root 2 centimeters or 20 plus 20 root 2 centimeters okay and so again if we had a right triangle where this was y was you know a little bit smaller x was a little bit greater that wouldn't be a greater perimeter you can test that out Okay, so this is the method non-trig, and this is the way that you probably would want to do this um, if you didn't know anything about the derivatives for trig functions. But now I'm going to show you how we're going to do all this using trig, okay? So not Pythagoras, that's the big thing. We're not going to use Pythagoras, we're going to use trig, okay? And instead of having this uh, split sort of screen here now, I'm going to just say, you know what, this is just using trigonometry now. Right. We'll keep the answers here, though, and see if we get the same answer, the, the perimeter here. Okay. All right, so we look at the same triangle. We look at the same triangle, and we can have x and y, and the perimeter is still 20 plus x plus y. But how could I introduce sine, cos, or tan uh, into this problem now? Because I don't want two variables. I just want one. So is there any way that x and y are related in a right triangle other than Pythagoras. How else could we use x and y to, uh, ex to be expressed without using Pythagoras? What do you know about right triangles other than Pythagoras? Any ideas? So Katoa, yes, so Katoa. That's going to be the key. So Katoa is going to be the key. Now, if we have an angle, okay, so watch this. I'm going to put this angle theta. I can actually relate y with angle theta and x with angle theta. And the single variable that we're going to have is going to be theta. So we're going to be working in terms of theta instead of one of x or y. So watch this. We know that the sine of theta, this angle right here, in a right triangle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So y is 20 sine theta. We also know that um, x is related to theta. This would be the 
adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. So that is cos of theta equals x over 20, or x equals cos theta times 20, 20 cos theta. So now we have a, a slight different look at it here, right? We're going to use theta as our single variable, and we're going to take the derivative of the perimeter with respect to theta instead of with respect to x or y. And so when we rewrite this perimeter, you're going to see that actually the perimeter is a function of theta now. We're going to have the hypotenuse, which is 20, x, which is going to be 20 cos theta, and y, which is 20 sine theta. Okay, so do you guys know what the derivative of cos theta is? And the derivative of sine theta, right? So this is the other way to do it. This is using the trig, okay? So this is the trig method. So we're going to take the derivative here. The derivative of 20 is just 0. The derivative of 20 cos theta is what? Negative 20 sine theta. And because we're taking the derivative with respect to theta, that should be a theta in there, then the chain rule doesn't really apply. We don't have to write theta prime, right? It's just times 1. So that's okay. And then plus 20 cos theta. Alright? Okay. We, are you good with me so far? Is this okay so far? So it's just a little bit of a different take on things, but it's using the trick. So now we let this equal to 0 over here, and I've got 20 sine theta equals 20 cos theta. That is, when I divide both sides by 20, I'm looking for the angle theta that makes the sine of that angle equal to the cos of that angle. So remember, when you're dealing with solving trigonometric equations, we're not actually isolating for theta, right? Not really. We are trying. We, we can often use the um, unit circle, uh, or we can, you know, use our. We can, we can um, split them with the inverse sine, I guess, or inverse cos. But here we're trying to find out: Do we know a theta? And of course, this angle has to be between zero and what? It's, it can be as small as zero. It's not going to help us much, and cannot go past ninety. So between 0 uh, and pi over 2, right? Is there a value, oops, is there a value on the unit circle where sine and cos are the same? Pi over 4, right? Both of them are root 2 over 2. Good, you guys should know that, you do. So guess what? Theta is pi over 4. What does that mean? That means that the angle here is going to be 45 degrees, which also means that x and y are going to be equal, which is very similar to the, the first method, right? So again, in terms of the angle. Okay, so what is x and what is y? Well, y is 20 sine theta, which is pi over 4. And x is cos, uh, t sorry, 20 cos theta, which is pi over 4. So sine of pi over 4, we know is root 2 over 2, times 20 is what? 10 root 2. And x is 10 root 2. So, using the trig method, we get the same perimeter right here of 20 plus two of these. All right? So that's important. That's important, kind of um, introducing how to use trig. And there are going to be other questions like that where you're going to be able to use sine, cos, and or tan. All right? Any questions?